We are now in part 2 of class less addressing. Let's start the session with the outcomes. Upon the completion of this session, the learner will be able to. Outcome number 1, we will understand the need for class less addressing. And outcome number 2, we will identify the valid and invalid subnet mask with the help of an activity. Let's start the session with the class full addressing. We know basically there are 5 classes in IPv4 addresses. Class A, B, C, D and E. Class D for multicast purpose and Class E is for experimental and research purpose. So we are left with only Class A, B and C for our usage. And we have already seen in the previous lecture that Classful addressing wastes IP addresses. And that's why we are migrating from Classful addressing to Classless addressing. We have some drawbacks with Classful addressing. The drawbacks include the lack of internal address flexibility the inefficient use of address space and the proliferation of router table entries. We have elaborately discussed about this in the previous lecture that is in part 1 of classless addressing. If you are not clear with the drawbacks, I request you to watch my previous lecture titled classless addressing part 1. We are clear that classful addressing wastes IP addresses and that's why we are focusing on classless addressing. The formal name of classless addressing is Classless Interdomain Routing. It is CIDR. C -I -D -E -R. It is pronounced as CIDR. Why do we need this CIDR or classless addressing? It created a new set of standards that allowed service providers to allocate IPv4 addresses on any address bit boundary, that is the prefix length, instead of only by a class A, B or C. We know basically the class A, B and C are used for our purpose, but when we go with class A, B or C, there are chances for the IP addresses getting wasted. And that's why we are moving towards classless. In classless addressing, we can create our own set of standards. That is, we can create a new subnet mask where this new subnet mask can help us to determine how many devices are needed for our network so that it enables us to sparingly use the IP addresses rather wasting a huge set of IP addresses. So this classless addressing is possible with the help of subnetting. There is an important topic in computer networks that too in network layer which is the subnetting. So subnetting helps us to create classless addressing and it also facilitates us to create our own network with the number of devices we need. We will talk about this subnetting elaborately in the upcoming lectures but before going into the subnetting topic we need to know the subnet mask. IP address says who are you in the network and subnet mask says who are your neighbors in your network. Let's see the valid subnet mask. So a subnet mask will take only these 8 possible values. There are basically 4 octets in an IP address. Likewise, there are 4 octets in a subnet mask as well. Say if it is a class A subnet mask, it will be 255.0.0.0. If it is class B, it is 255.255.0.0. If it is class C, it is 255.255.255.0. But we are going to create our own subnet mask based on our need and requirement, isn't it? So these are the values that is possible in a subnet mask. An octet value can be 255 or 254, 252, 248, 240, 224, 192, 128 or even 0. So how can we know this? In a subnet mask, there will be a consecutive ones followed by consecutive zeros. So there will not be a mixture of zeros and ones. Always remember this point. In a subnet mask, there will be consecutive ones followed by consecutive zeros. Say we have already witnessed this in a classful addressing also. Say if it is a class B subnet mask, what will be the subnet value? It will be 255.255.0.0. When it is 255.255.0.0, when we write it in binary, we will get a continuous 16 ones followed by continuous 16 zeros, right? So that's a valid subnet mask. Let's see more about this in the upcoming slide. We already know a subnet mask can be represented either in the decimal format or in the binary format or even it can be represented using a slash notation. So this is the slash notation. When it is slash 1, what does it mean? It means only 1 1 is there followed by continuous zeros. I will explain this. When it is slash 1, there is only 1 1 in the binary notation. So this is a valid subnet mask. Um, what is the decimal equivalent for this? 1 means it's 128. So the first octet is 128 and there are no 1's in the other places. So obviously this is 128.0.0.0. And what about the second example that is slash 2? Slash 2 means there are two 1's followed by 6 zeros in the first octet. 
and obviously there will be remaining zeros in the other octets. As I mentioned, ones followed by continuous zeros and there will not be mixture of zeros and ones in any octet. So if it is a one, it will be continued and then a zero is started, it will be continued till the last. So this is an example slash two notation. A slash two means what is the equivalent to decimal notation? Slash two means it's 128 plus 64, the bit position values. It is 128 plus 64, it is 192. So this is 192.0.0.0. So 192.0.0.0. Let's take slash 3. Slash 3 means it's 3 ones followed by 29 zeros. 3 ones means it's 128 plus 64 plus 32, which is 224. And the remaining 3 octets are 0. How many bit values are there in subnet mask? In IPv4, we know there are 32 bits. So the subnet mask is also of 32 bits. So it can be from slash 1 to slash 32 slash 1, slash 2, slash 3, slash 4, up to slash 32 is possible. And we know slash 8 means it's class full addressing. It is class A subnet mask. Slash 16 means it's class B subnet mask. And slash 24 means it's class C subnet mask. And that's why it's mentioned in a different color. Let's take another example. It is slash 19. Slash 19 means 19 ones followed by zeros. So how many zero values? So out of 32, there are 19 ones. So this is 8, right? First octet is of 8 bits. So we are putting 8 ones. Another 8 ones in the second octet. So 8 plus 8 is 16. So 16 plus 3 is 19. So we are putting 3 ones in the third octet. So we have 19 ones and followed by 13 zeros. So we are clear that there are consecutive ones followed by consecutive zeros. So slash 30 means 30 ones and 2 zeros. Let's see an activity, it will be more clear for you to understand the valid and invalid subnet mask. So the subnet mask in decimal is given and we are required to find whether they are valid or invalid. Let's take the first example which is 255.255.255.240. Let's convert this into binary. So we have the binary representation of the decimal subnet mask mentioned here. So when we convert this into binary, we can see it's continuous ones followed by zeros. So there is no mixture of zeros and ones in between. So obviously this is a valid subnet mask. So we can say this is a valid subnet mask. And what is the slash notation? Eight ones, eight ones, eight ones, and here four ones. So eight plus eight plus eight is 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So this is slash 28, perfect. Let's take the second one, which is 255.230.255.0. When we convert this into binary, we are ending up with this binary value. So obviously this is not a valid subnet mask because we know a continuous once when a zero is started it should continue till the last. If we notice here a zero has started and then still we have ones and zeros combinations. It's obviously an invalid subnet mask and we can't give a slash notation for this. Let's convert the binary equivalent for all these subnet masks. We have the binary representation of all the subnet masks. Now let's analyze whether it is valid. It's obviously valid because continuous ones if a zero is started, continuous zeros are there and no one is interrupting after that. So obviously this is valid and it's slash 16. It's a class B subnet mask. Why? There are 16 ones. Then 240.0.0.0. Yes, it is also valid. Four ones followed by remaining zeros. It is valid subnet mask. It's a slash four subnet mask, right? Then coming to the next one, it's 223.0.0.0. When we convert this into binary, we are ending up with continuous ones followed by a zero and then it should be all zeros right if it is valid but here we are finding one so it is obviously invalid and coming to the last one it's 255.0.255.0 so we are ending up with ones again zeros and then one is interrupting right so it should not be the case if it is a valid subnet mask so the last subnet mask mentioned here is also invalid let's see the homework question Identify the invalid subnet mask from the following. Option A, 255.240.0.0. Option B, 248.0.0.0. Option C, 255.255.128.0. Option D, 255.255.255.252. And option E, 255.255.242.0. Solve this question and post your answer in the comment section. And that's it guys. I hope now you understood the need for classless addressing and we also identified valid and invalid subnet mask with the help of an activity. Don't forget about the homework problem. 
I hope you guys enjoyed the lecture and thank you for watching.